Okay, let's face it. There's a jobs crisis in America, but there are people with creative solutions. So Dylan Radigan's crossing the country, highlighting things that work, and paving the way to creating jobs and a stronger America. The Dylan Radigan Show Steel on Wheels Tour, tomorrow at 4 on MSNBC. Powered by Nucor. Welcome back to Morning Joe. It is 8 o'clock on the East Coast. We have Mike Barnacle still with us. <laughs> still, he won't go. I know. He will I'm not Seriously. Lie. And then when we want him, just gets up and walks away. Clueless. John Heilman still with us. I'm joining the table. Republican senator from Massachusetts and author of the new book, Against All Odds, My Life of Hardship, Fast Breaks, and Second Chances. Senator Scott Brown. Great to have you here with us. Good to see you both again. The book is fascinating. Thank you. Was, Glad you how enjoyed. did you think of what did you think of the 60 minutes piece on your book? I thought it was fair. Uh, yeah. Obviously, uh, you know, tough to, tough to look at uh, and see your kind of life out there. But uh, I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed meeting Leslie. Obviously, she's a legend, mm -hmm. and uh, you know everyone respects what she does. Why did you write the book? Well, I was asked to write the book. Obviously, after the election, we had a lot of interest, and uh, so uh, I, I did it. And when I did it, I wanted to make sure that. Uh, didn't just gloss over the, the bad things, the, you know, the things that were challenges in my life, and just focus on the election, how wonderful life is, great, 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 because I, I thought it would be a disservice to the reader. Now, and we, at what point do they come to you, Scott Brown, he's this big new sensation in Massachusetts, let's get, him to, let's get him to write a book about his pickup truck yeah. and his three-point plan to fix Massachusetts exactly. education system. At what point did you turn to your wife and go, honey? I'm going there. I, I'm going to tell some things that nobody knows. Like, uh, when did you she, make she that didn't, decision? I didn't, I didn't let her read the book at all. Oh, my uh, until, Lord. Until about four weeks before when we got the galleys back. Yeah. And I actually uh, you know, s said, do you want to read it? No. You sure? Yeah. Yes. I, I want to read it. Well, then I don't want to read it. Just like back and forth. <laughs> Finally, I said, listen, here it is. Take it or leave it. Here's the book. Yeah. And she read it, and she was like, uh, I had a sense, honey. I had a sense that th that was what was going on. So. Well, she must have known some of your background. I mean, we're talking again. Well, but obviously, she knew the stealing, and right. she knew some of the other things. But she didn't. She had a sense because of the way I treated the kids. I would always say, hey, listen, if you go to camp, by the way, make sure if you, f you know, if something's yeah. weird's happening, don't be afraid to tell mom and dad. It's very yeah. important to don't be embarrassed, don't be scared, don't feel guilty. And she would always say, why are you so worrying about the kids so much? And, I, and then now it's come full circle. So she didn't even know about no. uh, you being molested until she read the book. Yeah, same with my mom and wow. my dad. And, and uh, did, uh, what was the conversation when she first read it? Was it was all good. Did she say? Well, she cried. She gave me a hug. And, uh, and then we talked about it. And we are continuing to talk about it. You know, more and more I'm able to tell her more and more as we kind of, you know. What about, your girls? What about your girls? The girl Zayla called me last night. She was on her way to Colorado to do a, do a musical event. And uh, she called me up and says, Dad, I get it now. I, I get why you were so protective and why you kept saying, Stranger danger, stranger danger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So um, I mean, just for those who haven't uh, read the book or heard about it, you not only talk about that, but um, having, I don't know, seven fathers, seven different stepfathers, many, many, many different homes, moving like 17 times in 18 years, and basically growing up with Without a sense of safety as a child, without a sense of anybody really being behind you and protecting you, how does that shape you now in the job that you are performing as senator from the state of Massachusetts? Does it affect your decisions? Well, I, probably it's formed who I am today and what makes me who I am. And, and I, in terms of ultimately affecting each and every vote, I, I don't think so. But uh, it made me to be the protector or the perceived protector uh, mm -hmm. throughout my life. And as a result of that, uh, I would like to think that I try to come down on the side of victims when it comes to issues of crime and punishment, certainly. And what about... Um personally because I have to say I've met you a few times and I definitely there are some people you can you can go right there there seems to be a little bit more of a careful wall with you well, I'm, I recognize that because my husband has a very similar story to yours and I watched Leslie's piece and it was like huh unlike other 60 minutes pieces usually there's sort of emotion evoked well, you, and you, usually you, you and can Jim were... pull it out and we both watched it and thought nope nope <laughs> there's gonna be none and there was none and does that have something to do with with the way you grew up. Well, I'm more resilient, certainly. A lot of the things that may affect people kind of roll off my back. So when I'm in the middle of an